Okay, the last thing I'd like to review with you is the actual review sheet that I posted in Classroom. So again, I one of the sections on the test tomorrow is the difference the different ways to represent an endothermic system and an exothermic system. I did a separate video on the differences. Then on the next section, I did a video on the specific heat constant and the conversion factors that you need to know. Problems 3 and 4 are conversion problems. See the conversion factor right here? Okay, I can probably write on it the screen. This is something a little different. Let's try that. Okay, so this is your conversion factor, and this is your conversion factor. So you do need to know that 1,000 joules is equal to 1 kilojoule, and one little calorie is equal to 4.18 joules. Why is the conversion factor written this way? because you're starting with kilojoules. And once you start with kilojoules and you put kilojoules in the denominator, kilojoules divides out and you're left with joules. Why do you put joules on the next conversion factor on the bottom? Because you want calories, little calories. Okay, that's number three. Number four is talking about 80 calories for a cookie. That's capital calories. You do need to know this conversion factor and why it's written this way. It's written this way because you're starting with big calories and one big food calorie is equal to a thousand little calories. The next conversion factor you need to know is joules to little calories. Why is the one little calorie on the bottom? Because you're at calories right there. And you don't want calories, you want joules as your final unit. Again, you're starting with big calories. The big calories goes on the bottom. You've seen me many times in class fill out the um, questions this way. Okay, let me see if I can scroll down. I don't think I can, so, okay. Mm, save changes, no. So let me, uh, I don't know where I am now. No, what's going on now? I may have to stop the video. Okay, I'm going to look at the next three calculations on the review with you. And here it is, number five. Notice there's a change in temperature on number five. A change in temperature. Whenever you have a change in temperature, you use your Q equation. We've been using that quite a bit in this chapter. 5B, the reason it's on the review, is because the initial temperature is given, but not the final temperature. Look at what I substituted in. I substituted in for delta T. Again, I'm using Q equals the mass times C times the change in temperature. The change in temperature, sometimes I know the change in temperature, but sometimes I just know the initial temperature. So I put in T final minus T initial, and I solve for T final. Watch your algebra on that question. And on number six, you're asked to find C. I always leave the variable in, and I look at the problem, and I underline or circle, and I mark the mass, Q, the temperature. The units always give it away. When you're working with water, you do need to remember your two C values. Right here, you're working with water again. So you need to remember the C value in calories and in joules. Not sure if I need, I'm going to stop this. I'd like to continue reviewing with you because on the uh, chapter 17 test you need to know how to do each kind of problem. And number seven is asking you to calculate heat and it's giving you, it's telling you something about water, it's telling you how many grams of ice you have, and we know that ice melts at zero degrees Celsius and we're given the molar heat of fusion. 
Whenever you're at zero degrees, or maybe tomorrow, we'll, I'll give you one where you're at 100 degrees and you are converting liquid water to steam, you need to multiply the moles by the molar heat. If you're working with ice, you're working with the molar heat of fusion. If you're working at 100 degrees, I will give you the molar heat of vaporization, which is 41 kilojoules. So again, just like the ice lab, you, you take the grams divided by 18, you have less than one mole, you multiply it by the molar heat of fusion. Why don't you use Q equals M times C times delta T? Because there's no change in temperature. All right, so that's something you need to remember. Number eight, it's a heat calculation. This is from worksheet three. I suggest that whenever you see a reaction that's balanced, you, you remember that the moles in the balanced reaction will be used with the heat of reaction or enthalpy of reaction in what we call mole and heat ratios. Sometimes it's a conversion factor of moles over kilojoules, and sometimes it's kilojoules over moles. Now, why? Let's see what we did here. You do need to focus on each of these items. You do need to read the problem. It says you have 109 grams of sodium hydrogen carbonate. That's baking soda. Don't forget how to calculate the molar mass of a substance, you add up the, mole, the um, mass using the periodic table of one sodium atom, one mole of sodium, one mole of hydrogen, and one mole of carbon, and three of um, oxygen. And that adds up to 84 grams per mole. Why is it one over 84? because you're starting with grams, and grams goes in the denominator so that you end up with moles. This is uh, a little bit over one mole. Then you multiply it by the heat over the moles. Where do I get the two from? It's the coefficient in front of the sodium hydrogen carbonate. And this will give you kilojoules, kilojoules of heat. Okay, here's the last part of your test review, and I'll make it quick. Again, there will be a Hess's Law problem that you need to solve. Okay, again, I suggest that you number the related reactions and you look for clues on what to do to each of these. If you don't do anything, if, well, if reaction one gets doubled, rewrite it and then double the read of heat of reaction. If reaction two is fine the way it is, just rewrite it and, re and carry over the heat of reaction or enthalpy of reaction. If reaction three needs to be reversed, reverse the reactants and the products. I always start with the yield sign. I kind of treat it like it's a equal sign. And when I reverse three, I actually do reverse the reactants and the products and I rewrite it. Okay? And if I rewrite it, I also reverse the sign on the enthalpy of reaction. When you add it all together and simplify, you should end up with this. And then once you add the enthalpies, you will end up with the unknown enthalpy. The last problem is a heating problem. You will be given the heating graph. You will be told where you're starting. You, it will be three steps. You will either be working with ice or liquid or steam or a combination of three steps. Please review your quiz and another video that I posted on the heating graph. Have a good night. Please review carefully. Bye-bye.